TCI is brought to you by Astrology, a graded stakes winning juvenile by AP Indy. New to TaylorMade Stallions for 2013. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Joel, before we talk about this weekend's races, let's recap the Rebel. You know, it was a good day for D. Wayne Lucas. His runners run 1-2 in the Rebel Stakes, and Joel, they look pretty good doing it. Really good day for D. Wayne Lucas. He basically assures himself of two runners in the Kentucky Derby. We all know Wayne Lucas, especially at this point of his career, he wants runners in that Kentucky Derby, right. John. Well, I think he's got two now. Even Oxbow running second in there. I think he has 36 points, probably going to get him into the Derby at this point. And I still think Oxbow is going to run better in his next race. He's a horse that's sort of been a hard luck type colt. But if we go to the Twin Spires TV race replay, we'll take a look at this stretch run, John. And you'll see here Oxbow, John. Oh, man, he has a little bit of a wide trip in here. Maybe another premature move. It's like we've seen this before, right? right. Uh, Mike Smith in the irons. But just an honest colt to the wire. But watch the uncoiling of this long stride from the Son of Unbridled song. Obviously, will take charge. The big chest on the outside just mows him down. Gets up at the wire. What's interesting about this Cole John, we liked him in the Smarty Jones stakes. Right. He obviously didn't run well on a sealed racetrack in the rain. He was too far back over a speed type track, you know, in the in the Southwest stakes. But he makes amends here in the Rebel. And I'll be honest, I really question whether or not his style fit the Rebel field because I thought there was quality speed. And I thought he's a horse that really needs to be engaged early and just kind of grind away when he lengthens that powerful stride of his. Well, he showed he can come from quite a bit off of it. So a new dimension uh, for this colt. And I think he's just going to get better going a mile and eighth, John. I mean, here's a colt that's just going to keep improving. So I like what I saw from Will Take Charge going forward. All right, I guess the big question is you said you like what you saw. You say you think he's going to get better. Did he do enough to get on the TCI top 10, though? That's the big question. You know, John, he didn't, and uh, I think he's a colt that will end up on the TCI top 10, and that's that's a little odd to say. I just don't believe in shuffling my top 10 that much, to be honest with you. We've kind of identified the 10 horses that we like from a talent perspective and an aptitude perspective. So I'm sticking with my top 10 right now, but he's right on the fringe, and quite honestly, I think he's going to run well. He's probably going to go to the Bluegrass Stakes if I had to handicap it because he broke his maiden at Keeneland, so he's handled the poly. I think he's going to like a mile and eighth. If he runs well in there and keeps improving, he will wind up in my top 10 most likely. But as of now, I'm going to give these other horses an opportunity to run well in their next prep races before I pull one off and replace him because, honestly, I do think Oxbow ran a great race again in defeat just like he did in the Risen Star. I still think Oxbow going forward to probably the Arkansas Derby is a colt that once he keeps uh, going further too, a mile and eighth, right. a mile and a quarter, when you look at that pedigree in the tactical speed, I love how nimble he is. I just think there's still a big upside on Oxbow. All right, so the big question I guess is going to be, I still see Oxbow in at number five. Yep. Will Take Charge defeats him in here, but I guess you thought Oxbow did enough to stay there in the, in the number five yeah. spot. I'm a big Oxbow fan. I, I love his tactical speed, John. Uh, again, I, I just see a big upside on him. Going forward at a mile and an eighth, mile and a quarter with that pedigree, I still like Oxbow quite a bit. So he belongs in the top five for me. And they both got a one-on-one -on -one brisk rating. So they ran a very comparable race. And, you know, on some other speed figures as well, Oxbow had very good uh, number of returns on that race. So it was a good race. All right, well, let's talk about this weekend's races. We have the Sunland Derby and also the Spiral Stakes. Joel, these both both these races have 50 points up for grabs. Right. What I think is funny, everyone's talking about the points, but nobody's mentioning there's $800,000 up for grabs in the Sunland Derby. And we have four maiden winners that are that are running for that purse. Yeah, what this is the last week, I guess, of the 50-pointers, right? So really on to bigger and better things, I think, going forward from here. But the Sunland Derby, you know, hasn't really produced a winner that's gone on to win the Kentucky Derby, John. But everybody remembers buying that bird coming yep. out of that race and having success in the Derby. So you, you see a lot of trainers maybe taking a shot in here. So you see Bob Baffert sending two very similar horses with sort of middle-distance pedigrees in here. You know, to me... Those horses are going to be the ones that take the money. We need to see a colt step up in this race. That's what really we want to see in the Sunland Derby because I think it's people just kind of taking a shot with a horse that's shown some talent but really right. isn't proven to this point. Abraham's a colt that I like, John. I really think that this son of disordered humor, having El Prado mare, you look at him. I remember when he sold as a yearling. He was one of my favorite yearlings on day one at the Keeneland sale. He just looks like a colt with a huge upside. And if Johnny V is going to spend his Sunday to come ride this colt in New Mexico, I have a feeling he's sitting on a big race. And to me, he's the colt that's bred for a mile and an eighth. You know, I'm not so sure these other colts, especially Baffert's Charge, are colts that are necessarily going to excel at longer distances. All right, well, you mentioned Johnny V. On Saturday, he will be uh, here in Kentucky. They'll be riding in the spiral stakes. He's got Capo Bastone in there. 
Joel, there are some horses in here that are very interesting. You see General Election has won a stakes race over here already, but right. you don't like either one of those horses. You actually like someone else. Now I'm going with the rail horse. Balance the books. I think he's sitting on a big race in his comeback. Julian Leperu rides. I think this is a perfect horse for Julian. It's kind of a turf style race where he's going to be able to save ground from the inside. Hopefully he'll show a little more tactical speed than normal since he's going to be fresh off the layoff. And I think his closing style, being by Lemon Drop Kid, should like the synthetic. You know, the synthetic's always tough to handicap. I mean, let's just be honest. It's very tough to handicap, right. and I think you have a lot of connections here taking a shot. I mean, Animal Kingdom obviously won the Derby coming out of the spiral, but even his own connections at the time weren't even confident in his ability to handle the dirt and be a real Derby horse. Well, he won the Derby, so it's a lot of connections with turf-type horses taking a shot. Really, the only accomplished horse at this point on the dirt is Uncaptured, John. Yep. He has established dirt form. He also has established synthetic form. John, so Uncaptured coming back, making his real debut in here. I think he's going to be your favorite in the race. The question I have for Uncaptured, he's by Lionheart. Right. I know he's out of an arch mare and he's handled two turns, but is he really going to be a mile and an eighth horse going forward? Is he really going to be a stamina distance type horse? To me, he looks kind of like a miler. Not that he can't handle a mile and eighth, but doing so off the bench, I think that leaves him a little vulnerable as your favorite in here. So I like balance the books coming from off the pace. If he gets enough speed up front and that track's playing fair, and again, it's a synthetic track. I think Balance the Books, being by Lemon Drop Kid, has the class and has the style that he can fire big off the bench. All right, thank you, Joel, and yep. thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap these races, and we'll preview three derbies, the UAE Derby, the Florida Derby, and also the Louisiana Derby.